G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, over the years I've built and acquired a lot of model engines, steam engines, Stirlings, a few flame blickers. And here's a shot of some I've still got in my uh, back computer room. And I'll just pan down. There's, uh, there's a few there. And I've got some others as well. <laughs> they, they accumulate, they add up. But uh, anyway, as you can see, there's a range of stuff there. And this one here on the end is a little wobbler. Where are we? You know, one there that I built oh, quite a while back. It runs on steam, runs good, no problem. And as you can see, it's like all the wobblers, well, most of them. It's a short stroke action. And, uh, yeah, no problem. Anyway, I was looking on a website, and I think it's called the Wigwag website. And there's a guy there that builds wobbler engines, and he calls them wigwags for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway, they're wobblers. And um, he built a stretched version of a wobbler. I mean, he's got V-twins and things like that. Well, I've got a little V-twin as well. But anyway, I've never built a, a stretched one. So lately I've been working on a stretched version. I'll show you where I'm at. It's not finished, but I'll give you a work in progress. Heads up anyway. Here's a drawing of the, the stretched wigwag. <laughs> wigwag. And, uh, I mean, I never work from plans. I just do it by eye, and they always work. Well, generally work. So this is just a Lincoln version. And I quite like the look of it. It looks good. It looks sort of old-worldy. So I, uh, I'm building something like this. And I'll show you where I'm at with it. Right, well, I cast some aluminium to make the uh, to make the uh, the spine for it and then I milled it on the lathe because I don't have a mill a milling machine I'm not rich uh, like some guys but anyway yeah, I did quite a good job I left a rough finish on the back and then I've got the smooth finish on this side because obviously the the mechanism's got to rub, rub on here and you've got to have a good seal. But I put a bit of decoration on it and it's running on two ball races. It's a six mil axle. Now the original one had an outrigger out here as well. Well, why do you have an outrigger? It's only for looks, I suppose, but I've got two ball races and that's quite, quite enough, I think. So I'll just go with that. And, uh, and then I just got some steel plate and the plan is that uh, I'll spray this green all green and the uh, I'm a little spacer goes on there and this was a, a flywheel I had from an engine that I dismantled or worked on or, anyway it was in my box of bits which I'll show you in a minute my box of bits Gotta have that, so we'll put that back on there. And this piston assembly was also in my box of bits from another project, and it's ideal for this. So I've I've machined up the uh, the wobbler bit here. I've got to drill this through, put a brass pivot sleeve on that so the screw doesn't rub the aluminium so I'll sleeve this and I'll sleeve the the body as well so it'll be brass on brass because you get quite a bit of wear here you know if you try and run a shaft through plain aluminium it'll get sloppy pretty bloody quick believe me so yeah this just goes in here it's all been reamed and uh, that's going to be the, the mechanism so um, 
that's where we're at with that. Now in my box of bits I've got all sorts of stuff and I found this, this is some gear that I had from other engines and this some brass and there's two diameters so this would be big enough to go and long enough to go through and make the main bush for the wobbler shaft and this is small enough that it will go in through there. I should be able to, I'll probably turn that down a bit more and that will be the, the sleeve that goes on this thread which I want to uh, shield so I'll I'll either put on a plain one or I might actually think of what I'll do is I'll machine this out for a uh, what's that three mil or four mil, three mil I think it is for four mil thread and I'll go bigger than desirable I'll go a couple of sizes up and that way I can tap a thread in there it's only it doesn't doesn't have to be a holding thread just a positioning thread and that will just allow it to screw on quite easily and tap very easily and I'll just lock tight it onto the thread so that will be an easy job otherwise if you try and go too tight in brass particularly for long and aluminium for long threads that are right on the recommended um, size you can find it you have trouble tapping them so it doesn't have to be a real snug fit just as long as it just sits there and also I found this off of another engine I was, it was a flame liquor that I turned into something else it's aluminium and I could actually replace this with this it's a six mil shaft and it's the right pretty much the right throw this is this has got about a I think it's about a 15 or 20 mil throw um, so I could use that rather than this I haven't quite made my mind on that so yeah so that's those bits and then I machined up a, a brass flywheel so that goes on here so it's going to look pretty cool I think with brass and then brass and then I'll put the whole base as I said this will all be painted green if I keep this this will be painted red this will stay brass and then I'll have it on a wooden, a dark wooden base and that will just, you know, cover up the, the screw heads and uh, I used <laughs> two different size screws because I, I originally threaded it like this size and when I tried to thread this one the damn thread stripped out this homecraft aluminium can be a bastard of stuff to to tap a thread in with small sizes, bigger sizes is not, not, not a problem but small sizes you can easily have problems and if you ever do tap a thread in this home cast aluminium or any aluminium you really want to do it dry as soon as you put lube on there the tap can start, start skipping on the threads and then it will just chew out the threads rather than get a good purchase and pull itself in so that's something, something to be aware of yeah so that's where we're at with that Oh, here's a bit more brass out the old bits and pieces box. Yeah, I better show you the bits and pieces box. So here it is. This is my bits and pieces box. It's a toolbox I picked up from somewhere, and I keep all the parts that I that I've ever used on building model engines. And there's all sorts of stuff in here. So, you know, you've got leftovers there, drive belts. Lots of brass of various sizes, pulleys, axle shafts, mounts, pulling fins, ball races, you know, you name it. It's all in here. Yeah, and then there's more in the bottom. Oh. Yeah, so here we go, we've got part of a sterling that was I think it was finished and I wasn't happy with it I can't remember what it was anyway it's another sterling I can maybe I never finished it yeah I think I didn't get complete on that one 
Oh, well, whatever. And then we've got some electric motors. You know, you scabbed out of... Um, who knows what? That you can use to drive things. 7.2 volt, that one. This one's got a gearbox on it. That one came out of a electric drill, a cordless drill. So I kept all that because you might want to have a step down reduction drive, you know. And then you've got a whole lot of brass air connectors there. Uh, oh, the Christmas tree lights that I bought from Woolies the other day. There, there. Yeah, so you keep all this stuff. And if you keep it all together, you know where you're at. And then looking down here, you can see I've got more Vegemite lids with bits in it that I've kept aside for specific reasons. Now these are the screws and wood screws I'm going to use for the, the base to screw the metal plate down onto the wooden base. And this is a little brass fitting I'm going to use for the spring adjuster on the back of the wobbler, wobbler pivot. So that's a spark plug lead. An old one, an old which old one, and I'm going to use that as the little screw, polish it up. And that is a 4mm, perfect size, so yeah, that'll be part of it. And uh, yeah, so all this stuff, you know, it's the way to go. But, um, oh, that's that little pipe bender I got. And some, a uh, guy sent it to me, that's right. I've only used it once, it's really good, not bad. And of course, yeah, this is a, a little knocking hammer I made years ago. When you're working on small stuff and you want to just tap stuff into position, this is perfect because it, it's not like a big hammer where you're, you're swinging a great big length and it's awkward and you, you haven't got much control. With this, you can just sort of just tap stuff. It's really good. You can see it's done a lot of work. Very easy to make and you can hit it on the back with a hammer if you want, which I've done a <laughs> quite a few times. So there's a little project for you, make one of those up. They're super, super good. Super handy too. I'd put that in the same class as the little cheetah bar for um, Allen, Allen keys, you know, so you can get a good purchase. Now, simple devices, but they save your hands and they're super, super useful, you know. But uh, oh, this gets lots and lots of use, I tell you. All the milling's been done on this uh, lathe, vertical mill slide down here. I've just got it resting down there. I could have taken some shots of this all being done, but at the time I was too busy and I thought, oh, I won't bother, you know. And uh, so anyway, that's what I've been using. You can see what that looks like. And of course, uh, the old Chinese lathe gets a lot of use. Great lathe, that. I mean, that thing has been so damn good. And I'd actually checked it for wear after like 20 years use and I ran the, the uh, indicators over it where I could and there's just no wear really. I mean, it's as good as the day I got it after all this work and man, it's done some work, believe me. Okay, well that's it for now. Just a bit of a heads up. And uh, yeah, when I've finished it, I'll get back to you and show you the rest of the <laughs> the rest of the project, but that's it for now. Okay, catch you next time. Cheers.